Hi, I'm Kyle Marsh from the Identity and Network Access Division here at Microsoft. And in this video, I want to talk about application permissions. So applications need to be authorized in order to access resources. When I have an application where there is no user present, it's a service, it's a background task, it's a daemon, um, these types of applications with no user present still need to access uh, ask for authorization in order to call to a resource. In this case, however, the application must use the request for a dot .default scope. So you acquire a, ask to acquire a token with the dot .default scope. Now, you also have to provide your client credential for this application. Preferably, this would be a certificate-based client credential, where the certificate can be managed to the device at the right time uh, for the application, or possibly a secret key, but really only if you have a sophisticated secret key management. Once that is provided, Azure AD will go ahead and determine whether or not this application is actually allowed to access the resource, and in the case of an application permission, exactly what specific operations on that resource as well. What we do is we go look at the application registration or possibly the service principle uh, if it is a multi-tenant service that's running. And we look to see what permissions are in the application registration. So here, for example, the application has uh, asked for user.read.all as part of its application registration. And we can see that the admin has already granted it for this tenant. And in fact, there is a button here in this UI on the app registration page where an admin can make that grant. Now, it must be consented by an admin, and it must be done before the application or service runs. There's no interaction possible with one of these applications, so this has to be done ahead of time before the application runs. Now, having determined that, the, e, the application is either going to be granted consent, and we will create a token for that, or it will be denied, and in, in which would be the case if there had been no uh, permissions in the application registration, or if the admin had not yet consented to those permissions. But as long as the application has those in place on its app re registration and the admin has consented, then we will return the application permission token to the service. At this point, uh, that service application can go ahead and access the resource and provide its access token that authorize it to make that request. Now, these services that are using application permissions, they do, as I mentioned before, need to have a client credential. Using a secret is OK. Uh, but you do need to be very cautious about protecting those secrets. That's why we suggest really use it if you have a sophisticated secrets management system in your enterprise. Otherwise, they tend to be mishandled fairly often. The next better choice is certificate-based uh, client credentials. Uh, the nice thing about a certificate-based client credential is the secret itself, the private key that we use to sign the assertion, is not actually transmitted as the secret key is during a secret key usage. So certificates are a better option whenever you can for your client credentials. Finally, if you are building your, your services on Azure, then you can use something called the Manage Identity for Azure Resources. Uh, this is a great option because it means there are no secrets, no client certificates of any uh, nature needing to be managed. All of that is handled under the covers directly by Azure and Microsoft Identity. Uh, the process changes slightly. Instead of asking Azure AD for the token, you actually ask the Azure resource uh, in which your service is running. Now, always these applications require admin consent. Uh, and by default, these permissions give access to the application to all instances of that resource in the tenant. So for example, user.readwrite.all means this application with its application permission can update or delete any user in this tenant. So clearly a very powerful permission, hence the need for an admin consent. But even for something like calendars.read, 
This also, by default, means that this application could read the calendar of every user in this enterprise. Now, there's no issue of whether or not these permissions are bounded by a user being present, because obviously they are, they are not. So generally, these are unbounded permissions. However, there are three scenarios where you can limit uh, the reach of an application permission. For the Teams APIs, they have a specific resource-specific consent capability where you can limit the access of the application permission to specific teams. Exchange has their Exchange application policies that lets you limit an application permission to specific mailboxes. And finally, uh, SharePoint has sites.selected, which when is issued by default, the application has access to no sites, but uh, the admins could use something like Microsoft Graph in order to assign the application access to specific sites, and even within that, specific operations within those sites. For example, maybe one site the application can read from, while at a different site the application could update. So in general, you want to use application permissions whenever there is not a user in front of the application. And it authorizes that application to access these resources that are protected by Azure AD. Remember, it has to be done ahead of time in the application registration and has to have been consented by an admin before the application runs. Generally, it does provide access. They're very powerful permissions. They provide access to all instances of the resource in the tenant, unless you're using one of the accommodations from Teams, SharePoint, or Exchange that allow you to limit those particular application to specific uh, resources. And finally, remember, when you do make the request uh, to get an access token uh, for an application permission, you're going to use the .default scope. Thank you very much, and I hope you are successful with your application permissions.